Hello and welcome to Interior CAD 2019. Um, we've had a few demo downloads from UK uh, joiners and um, some have come back with some questions. I'm going to try and answer um, those questions um, and give you a brief introduction to the Interior CAD cabinet maker. There'll be more videos about um, all the other stuff that we have, but for now let's have a look at the cabinet 3D object. Uh, just going to select the uh, tool, cabinet 3D tool, and place the cabinet in the drawing. Um, you may have noticed there's a, a menu up here which will allow you to place a cabinet from your own library which is currently empty because it's a fresh install and this is where your own saved cabinets will appear once you've, uh, once you've created some. Okay, now the cabinet obviously is a parametric object so you can change its key values in the object info palette. For example, let's set this guy to 1200 millimeters and there you go, it's now 1200 millimeters. Um, just a nifty little trick for those who don't know, you can use the reshape tool um, to change the three key um, dimensions of this cabinet. So if you have something in your drawing that you want to snap to, go ahead and just use these blue handles. Okay, now let's go into a little bit more detail and I'm just going to um, look at the front division of this cabinet. Now what you can see is that you can subdivide the whole uh, front of this um, object by using either boxes or columns. So that's basically your vertical division, that's your horizontal division. Now let's start with uh, two columns. Um, so enter two, hit apply and you've got two columns. Now these are equally spaced columns, that's because these um, if you just hit apply, these hashes are created by InteriorCAD automatically and uh, this means uh, they're, they're basically wildcards. This means they take up the uh, available space. Now um, let's fill this up with five boxes um, and let's uh, insert some movable shelves and create a left hinge door and give it a handle. I'm just going to be a bit quicker about this so you don't get bored too much. You can always stop the video if it's too fast. Um, so um, that's the door um, and you can save that door um, as a standard door. Um, so I've already done that so the existing door will be replaced by my new standard door and now next time I need a door I go, I go to standard door and I have a door and you can see that it saves the whole of the front division along with that front. So um, you can just um, you know create your own uh, individual little boxes and then fill them all up with uh, whatever you've uh, created and uh, retrieve it from this menu. Um, you can flip, obviously flip this um, uh, this part, um, you can flip whole cabinets in the drawing using the uh, Vectorworks uh, mirror tool uh, and uh, that's that's going to be reflected in this dialogue. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail and I'm actually going to delete the front division. Notice how I've just deleted what's behind the front, so the door's still there. If I don't want the door, I'll just switch this to none, because in this right segment I want to depart from the equal division and I want to place uh, two drawers at 200 millimeters and then fill up the rest with um, some um, movable shelves. So let's start with creating by creating uh, three uh, boxes and I'm just going to enter 200, 200. Um, hit apply and you see I have two 200 millimeter boxes here and uh, the rest which uh, InteriorCAD adds automatically. I'm just going to get rid of the uh, dimension hints here um, and uh, just going to place a drawer with a handle and I'm going to put that handle at the top with a 30 millimeter gap between the handle and the top. So let's, uh, in this case, just copy and paste this um, front and let's get rid of the dividing shelf. So now I have two segments still um, with two drawer fronts, but there's no shelf um, separating the two. Um, and as, as I said, I'm just going to fill this up with some movable shelves like this. Um, let's just leave it at that. There's a lot more details um, on the left here. Um, I'm just going to quickly show what happens if I click on any of these um, components here and you can see that there, there's some details that you can change. Um, there's one important bit here which allows you to um, change the material um, as a departure from the standard material that you've assigned via this tab here. So if I put this to um, 
let's put Beach Sauvignon here, and you see that you have fur. Um, so there's the let's see the movable shelf. So there you go. That's uh, chipboard as a core material, and then Beach veneer top and bottom, um, etc. And then you you can change all the details um, here, but below the uh, below the list, um, along with the edges. I'm, I'm going to make another video talking in detail about materials, material configurations, cutting lists, etc. Um, all I want to say for now is that if you want to depart from what you've set as a standard, you can do so by clicking on this link here, <clears throat> and that will allow you to assign a different material to any of the uh, components um, of the cabinet. Okay, um, so let's just create this guy now. And here we go. That's um, that's our cabinet. Um, it's not actually finished for production, but you could now use it for rendering and presentation. And that's the quite quite a common workflow, whereby you create your um, your design using the cabinet uh, cabinet maker and uh, custom parts. And then when you um, when you're given the the contract um, and you want to go into production with the whole project, then you start signing. Um, fittings, um, millings, etc. Uh, that will prepare the whole project for um, both conventional manufacturing or even uh, CNC um, based manufacturing. And I'm going to show you how now. Um, let's just scroll down here. This is the um, the list. This is the list of tools that will um, place um, fittings in your in your cabinet. So let's start with some uh, simple pins or dowels. And you can see once I click this um, this tool, a dialog comes up and it uh, is asking me to choose which of the pins um, I want to to assign. So basically, this is this is your your menu of favorites. This is the, a list of, of pins that you've uh, used previously. Uh, I haven't installed the whole um, library, so there's some German bits left here, and there's some uh, there's only one wooden pin here, five by twenty five, which is a little bit weedy, but um, we'll just use it for demo purposes right now. Uh, we're still in beta phase, so um, Interior CAD 2019 is going to be released in early 2019. So just in case you're wondering, some of the menus are a bit sparse right now. Um, okay, so um, what you notice is that um, this tool um, switches the drawing to translucent um, uh, to rendered version with just the um, the connecting uh, surfaces between two custom parts um, highlighted by these blue grids. Now, these grids are user definable. Um, you can just as you did for the for the dowels. You can choose the grid from this dialog and um, you know um, to create your own, um, which you know is is really the the most important bit. And I'm going to cover that in another video. Um, so you see how the grid changes according to what I choose from this dialog here. Uh, oops, yeah, let's uh, use this one here. And if you hold down shift when you place your first dowel, it'll place it uh, uh, on all the similar parts. So um, this will place it uh, on the uh, on the division and the fixed shelf. Uh, and this has placed it on the corner. So that's your that's your dowel, uh, your dowels. And you can use your connectors um, just the same. Um, you see different. Uh, Manufacturers here, you can very easily change um, or add your own. Um, so that's a different grid altogether. So the uh, the grid for the, uh, uh, for the for the connectors is is a different one than uh, what you use for the dowels, obviously, because you don't want uh, these to collide. And by selecting the the top or bottom grid point, you can um, govern the um, direction. So this is flipped up with the housing flipped up. And uh, if I had used the bottom one, then the housing would be flipped to um, be tightened from the inside of the cabinet, um, which would probably have made more sense. But never mind. Let's just uh, leave it at that. Um, what you notice is that you see all of these um, yeah, details in the cabinet now. Uh, let's switch on the 3D details. This is what we call production realism, um, and it shows you all the details of the cabinet as they are, as they will be um, when it gets to manufacturing. So if you like put a, an extra drilling in the top, not only will it be um, created as part of the CNC code, but it actually shows you what it does um, with, uh, with the top shelf here. So if I 
switch this to drill through you can see that you can see that the uh, chipboard really nicely and you can sort of uh, float this in in the part like a window in a wall basically um, and that's uh, yeah that's what we call production realism so let's get back to uh, finishing up this uh, cabinet um, I'm going to place some hinges here so I'm going to click on the front and uh, select a grid and uh, choose this one and uh, that will place two hinges and again I'm going to show you how to change this um, to your own specifications in a later video um, so you can change the grid so that the hinges adjust in number and in position when you change uh, the height of the cabinet uh, so that, that the door height uh, becomes different um, what you I'm just going to go to back to wireframe quickly um, yes I know thank you um, so what you can do is you can actually select each of each of these hinges let's go to front view yes thank you and I'm just going to alt drag this to here and um, this will <clears throat> create another set of drillings where I've placed this hinge um, and you may think that this is now has now been disconnected from the cabinet but it uh, sorry about that but in fact it hasn't so if I change the um, width of the cabinet you will notice that the hinges come along with the changed width so um, even though they're, they're selectable um, they're associated with the cabinet uh, which is really quite nifty um, when you have to make sort of uh, last minute changes or one-off designs that you don't want to create a grid for you can just you know select all of these and remove them or change them um, you know add extra drillings as I've shown before um, so everything that I that I do, everything that I've done now with with this cabinet, will make it to the CNC. Yeah, that's that's basically the, the mission that we're on with Interior CAD. Um, just going to place a drawer and uh, finish up this uh, first tutorial. Um, so you click on the front, you get um, a selection of uh, wooden drawer slides, and you may wonder why does it come up? How does it know I, I want a wooden drawer? This is actually I'm going to cancel out of it. Um, do that again and you can see that you can switch this uh, tool from uh, wooden drawers to system drawers now if I switch to system drawers I can configure my system drawer by choosing from oh there's only Hefel and Hetty now there's, there's going to be lots more um, so I'm just going to choose this uh, architect show the longest possible is uh, will filter um, for what you can fit into your uh, cabinet um, depth wise and then you have the um, the slides here okay so let's just make this and uh, it's going to place the the drawer in the in the box um, takes a bit longer the, the first time around and second time you just hit the the green uh, tick and it's 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 there so that's all for this video make sure you check back uh, frequently because I'll be adding um, videos about uh, some more details about interior CAD how to issue cutting lists, how to change your cabinets, design, etc, etc. So thanks for watching and see you later.